What I'm coming on to now is social fields, the fields of organization of social groups. And the easiest way to think of social fields is through flocks of birds. There we see a flock of starlings over Brighton West Pier in England. And starlings fly in these flocks which rapidly change direction. They're most spectacular things. Most of you have probably watched uh, flocks of birds doing this sort of thing. This has been a puzzle for scientists for a long time because the way these fields work is that the individual animals move and change direction much too quickly for it to be explained just in terms of looking at their neighbors, seeing what they're doing and um, responding to their neighbors just by watching them. It happens too quickly for them to do that. And the best computer models of flock behavior nowadays are based on magnetic field models treating the whole flock as a field which works back on the individual members within it and their position and their movement depends on the dynamics of the field. Now the same applies to schools of fish which again swim together, they can move rapidly and change direction without bumping into each other. So not only do they know um, where their neighbours are but they know where their neighbours are going to go as otherwise every time they change direction rapidly they'd all bump into each other and they simply don't. They don't do it by just watching their neighbours, not just a matter of feeling pressure waves from their neighbours. That's been shown in experiments. So I think these, all these things to do with groups of animals are field phenomena. And the fields that govern them, I suggest, are another kind of morphic field which organise the group. Now, I think this applies to all groups of animals, including human families, you know, social groups in the human realm, football teams, for example... It applies to wild animals, uh, which are social. It applies to social insects like termites and ants. Uh, the coordination of the colony uh, of these insects with very small brains isn't in the brain. It's in the field that organizes the individual insects. And when it comes to animals like packs of wolves, what I'm suggesting is that the whole pack has a field. All the members of the group are connected through this field. When some of the members of the group go away and leave the other ones, the field doesn't break, it stretches. So when, in a wolf pack, they leave the young wolves, the cubs, in the den, usually with a babysitter, while the adults go out hunting, um, they may range over tens, even hundreds of miles. And it's not as if the field that links them is broken, it stretches like an invisible elastic band and continues to connect the adults with the young, even over long distances. And because they're connected by these fields, I suggest they remain linked so a change in one can affect the others. And I think that this is the basis of telepathy. I think it's a form of communication between bonded members of social groups that works through the field of the group. There's already evidence that wolves in the wild are telepathic with each other over great distances. There's an analogy to this in quantum theory. Quantum non-locality is the phenomenon whereby particles that have been part of the same system, when they move apart, remain connected at a distance so that a change in one affects the other um, at a distance. This is sometimes called entanglement. And this provides a strong analogy for telepathy between separated members of social groups. They're together, they feel part of, they're part of the same system. When they move apart, a change in one is correlated with a change in another. The fields of social groups, as morphic fields, have a kind of built-in memory. And this is true of human fields as well. In human families, the family has a kind of field, and the field of the family has patterns and habits within it. And this is something which is most graphically illustrated in a form of psychotherapy called systemic family constellations. This work, pioneered by a German psychologist, Bert Hellinger, treats the family as a field. And in the workshop, some of you may have done them. I know some of you have. Yes, indeed, there are one or two people here who actually lead these groups. What happens, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is that say you're working on your family. You might be working on your family of origin, i.e. your parents, brothers, and sisters. You pick people from the group to represent your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, and so on. 
then you place them in relation to each other. If your parents were very close, you'd put them close together. If a member of the family was very distant and disconnected, you'd put them further away, sort of facing away from the family. People arrange the family in a way that seems to represent that family group. It effectively creates a kind of field of the family, and people who are standing in for members of the family often feel emotions that are appropriate to the person in that position in the family field. They sort of tap into the field. What Hellinger has shown and what many other people working in this, with this kind of work have shown is that very often patterns in family fields where, say, a member of the family becomes suicidal or wants to go away from the family or is very disconnected often reflects a way in which in a past generation a member of the family was excluded from the group, either because they committed a crime or they were the black sheep or they committed suicide or something. It sets up an imbalance in the field which moves through generations unconsciously. People are often un unaware of this. And by going back to the generation where the person was excluded, including them again, by having someone to represent them, bringing them back in a group, it has a healing effect on the whole fam family field. It's a remarkable form of therapy. I've seen it work myself. My wife does it in a more ceremonial form than Hellinger. So I mention that because um, it's a way in which morphic fields actually directly interface with a particular form of psychotherapy and provide a kind of explanation for some of these remarkable effects that this uh, therapy can produce.